Hi friends, welcome to another important topic in ophthalmology, iritis or iridus acolytis. As the name itself suggests, it's an inflammation of the iris or iris and the ciliary body that is iridus acolytis. Because iris and the ciliary body are derived from the same tissue, it's a middle vascular coat. Generally, the inflammation of one part is associated with the inflammation of the other part. That's why it's commonly called as iridocyclitis, or common people say it is aritis. It is a common cause for painful loss of vision. And the age of presentation is uh, quite typical. It is generally in young to middle age. However, rarely you may see elderly patients getting aridocyclitis or aritis. So, what are the important features of aritis or aridocyclitis? Or it's also called as anterior uveitis because uvi includes iris, ciliary body, and choroid and the anterior part of it is iris and ciliary body so pain redness decreased vision and intolerance to the light developing over a period of few days are the typical symptoms of aritis and most of the patients are very much intelligent to pick up these symptoms because this has got a lot of tendency to recur so any patient who has got a history of iritis will have future episodes of iritis as well when you examine the eye you may notice redness of the eye in the form of ciliary congestion that is congestion around the cornea or redness around the cornea keratic precipitates these are the deposits on the posterior surface of the cornea that is on the corneal endothelium they are called as keratic precipitates they are very typical of iridocyclitis corneal edema or cornea may be hazy or cloudy because of the inflammation in the iris the iris may get stuck to the cornea or it may get stuck to the lens behind which is called as synechae or adhesions which in turn leads to irregular pupil it can also lead to development of cataract and because of the inflammation it can cause the pressure within the eye to go high so important things to remember about iritis are one is history of recurrent episodes it can be unilateral or it can be bilateral so any patient with painful red eye always asks, did they have these symptoms in the past? If they say yes, then it can be a clue to iridocyclitis. Associated connective tissue disorders like ankylosing spondylitis, rheumatoid arthritis can be associated with iritis or iridocyclitis. Routinely, there is no need to investigate every patient with iritis. However, in patients who have got uh, bilateral iritis or iridocyclitis or granulomatous anterior uveitis, you want to look for the inflammatory markers like ESR, CRP, full blood count and you may also want to consider looking for specific markers for inflammation or infection in the body. The mainstay of treatment of iritis is topical steroid drops. It may be either dexamethasone or prednisolone eye drops to be given initially every one hourly and then you gradually taper it over a period of days to weeks depending on the response. Cycloplegics to paralyze the ciliary muscle helps by decreasing the pain and it also prevents development of synechae or adhesions and it does break the adhesions which are already formed.
regular follow-up to monitor the response and progress is very very important because we need to taper or increase the frequency of the steroid drops depending on the severity of the inflammation so if you look at this picture you can see some white deposits on the cornea in the inferior part they are on the back side of the cornea the corneal endothelium this can be picked up more easily with the slit lamp examination these are called as keratic precipitates and when you look at the pupil the pupil is not round it is bit oval and this is because of the possible adhesions or synechia and this can cause the pupil to become irregular so hope you like this short talk on iritis giving you some brief idea about this we will try to understand a little bit more in detail about idosaclitis later.